we, yes, we are on Shakur's Plateau. Huck is our blue Protoss from Team Evil Geniuses. Chris, Chris Loranger, who's, uh, who's been doing pretty well, number one in his division against the number nine in his division. Axlav from Team Infinity 7, the red Protoss. And Axlav, he's a really stand-up guy, by the way. Um, he was just in a couple show matches, and I really root for him. Axlav, I remember talking to him once, and this was back before I joined NASL. And I was, I was one of those guys that was seeking to really help the players out. I was offering Axlav to do a series of show matches with him. And I was like, well, what kind of opponents do you want? And Axlav was like... I want the hardest ones possible, and it's like, I don't want any free wins. I don't care if I lose every single show match as long as I can play the best players. And that's kind of the attitude Axelath has. And when he told me that at MLG, I was like tearing up. I was like, man, this is an attitude of a champion. It's just unfortunate that Axelath hasn't been able to pair his mind with his hand. Yeah, he's actually known for being a very, very slow player as he sits at an average of 38 APM <laughs> right now. Yeah. Um, one of uh. the slower pros, I would say, by... Well, I mean, he doesn't spam. He doesn't if he doesn't need to. So, mm -hmm. well, his EAPM, yes, his EAPM is very close to his actual APM, but that's still super tiny for EAPM. It's like really, really tiny. But you know, I mean, it doesn't really necessarily ma matter about your ability to, uh, to to do a lot of things. Although more and more in StarCraft what? II, multitasking is becoming really important. Yeah. But one of the most uh, important things. I'm just stating a fact, okay? This is not to say which race takes more skill or not, but Protoss players generally have less APM. Some guy released a bunch of stats. You know, Zerg, Terran players require a lot more APM than Protoss does just because a lot of your attention is focused on the immediate. You warp in all at once. You, you know, you, you put your pylons and you really prepare, you know, accordingly. And so yeah. that's just how the mechanics work. I think so you need a lot of burst APM. That's right. Yeah, immediate APM. Like, you need to summon everything at once. So, oh, man. You've been playing so much Diablo. What? How? How's that, how's that allowed to Summoning Diablo? is for Dude, Diablo, bro. you see, I'm going to look at your profile and talk. Next time we cast, talk how many hours you put into the game. Okay. Mind, and we'll say how much Diablo. I think you put more. No, you do. You're such a liar. Anyways, uh, we see pretty differentiating uh, openings here. Axlav. He has this interesting build for a while, again, the Phoenix DT style. Um, he's been a great proponent of Phoenixes, but on Shakur's Plateau, he's also done Phoenix Expand build with cannons. Now, he doesn't, he's been falling away from that a lot recently, um, but we see that Huck is going for a very standard uh, gateway opening. He's getting three gates, and he does have Stalkers out. He's placing a pawn straight up in the middle of the map. Axelab does not see it. Oh, no. In fact, Huck's not paying attention to his Stalker, and Axelab caught it off guard. If he can snipe the Stalker, it'd be huge. Very nicely done. And he does, but... These pylons are up, though. That's a little bit of trouble. And Axelab, I don't even think he knows about any of these. No, he doesn't. He needs to be uh, so careful, because there's a pile or a probe inside his opponent's base. And my god, there's three pylons queued right now. This is not looking good for Axelab. Yeah, and uh, Huck's drawing attention away from the ramp. That's the big key thing, and the, and the huge thing is the stocks are now in. One Phoenix out for Axelab. Now, uh, the big thing is that, oh, the pylon power in the gateway is all that's left, and Axelab is feeling pretty silly at this point. No, another pylon there really uh, saving it. Just kidding. Thought that was going to be a, a, a terrible situation, but the bigger situation is that Axelab only has one gate compared to three of Huck. And uh, uh, that is going to be extremely difficult to hold off. This isn't good. And this Probe's obviously dying here. Means a nice win for Huck. Uh, sentry is going to help out a little bit, but he misplaces the Sentry for his field. Uh, stalkers can't really move past it. But what does Axlap have after this? He doesn't even have another warp in. And Huck's just able to really put on a lot of three-gate aggression. And this is just because he cut his uh, gates a little bit earlier. Or sorry, he cut his economy a little bit so that he can get his gates earlier and really go for strong aggression. GG out of Axelab. A very quick gain over two goes in favor to Chris Ranger. Huck moves up further in division, securing his number one seed. Really straightforward game. Yep, very straightforward game. Um, I mean, Huck went for a huge aggression. Axelab went for tech and was not able to get it. And if Huck went for like a standard, you know, two gate stock or something like that, but that's not Huck. Like, if you if you play against Huck, you have to understand early aggression is just what he is best in. Mm -hmm. And if you expect him to be passive to let you build up your Phoenix count, it's uh, you're asking for Huck to be completely different. Yeah. So.
You're trying to metagame a little bit too much with that, I think. I agree. <laughs> it's it's unfortunate, but uh, Axelov takes the 2-0 loss, ladies and gentlemen. That is going to close out the series, but does not mean we're done with the day. We have another matchup coming for you after this.